Hey everyone, welcome to part one of my three style tutorial. Three style is one of the most important topics in blind solving. It is by far the fastest method and all the recent records have been set with three style. All right, let's get started with this tutorial. First of all, what is three style? Well, let's say we have this case. Our corner buffer is UBL and the first target is RDF and then BDR. If we use old Pachman, we would solve the first target and then the second. However, with 3Style, we would use one commutator to solve both of these pieces. And that's what 3Style essentially is. It's a method where you use commutators to solve two pieces at a time. The goal of this method is to learn commutators for every cycle that includes your buffer, so that no matter what case you get, you can solve both pieces at the same time. Now you might be thinking, isn't that a ton of algs? Well, you're partly right. There are a lot of cases. However, it's not as bad as it seems because commutators are intuitive. A common analogy is that learning 3Style is like learning F2L. When you learn F2L, you don't memorize hundreds of algs. Instead, you understand how the pieces move, and then you solve them intuitively. However, before you start learning 3Style, I recommend that you follow two guidelines. First, you can start learning no matter what you average, but I personally believe that you should be sub 2 before you start learning. It's important to be comfortable with basic concepts like making letter pairs or eliminating large pauses before you switch to an advanced method. Secondly, you should only learn if you're serious about blind solving. It takes time to get fast with 3Style, so if your goal is just to average a minute or a minute 30, it's better to stick with an intermediate method like M2 Old Pachman or a Rosco. Of course, if you're aiming for sub 45, sub 30, or even sub 20, you definitely need to use 3Style. Before we can get into the details, we need to understand how commutators work. Commutators are also called comms for short, and I will be referring to them interchangeably throughout this tutorial. A commutator is a sequence of moves that follows the form a, b, a prime, b prime. For example, if a was r, d, r prime, and b was u, then the commutator is a, b, a prime, b prime, or r, d, r prime, u, r, d prime, r prime, u prime. Due to the laws of the cube, if we do a, b, a prime, b prime, only the pieces caught in the intersection of a and b will be affected. Because of this property, we can use commutators to cycle three pieces at a time without disturbing the rest of the cube. I know this is a difficult concept, so let's take a look at an analogy. Imagine we have a conveyor belt and a crane. There's some random stuff on the conveyor belt, but there are also three boxes, numbered 1, 2, and 3. What we want to do is cycle the position of the boxes so that box 1 is here, box 2 is here, and box 3 is here. However, we must be careful not to disturb any of the other things on the conveyor belt. There are two operations we can perform. One, move the conveyor belt left or right. And two, use the crane to swap a box. Notice that if we move the conveyor belt to the left and then move it right, nothing happens. Similarly, if we swap a box and then swap it again, we're right back to where we started. As you've probably guessed, the way to solve this is to use both of these operations. First, we will swap the box, move the conveyor belt, swap the box again, then move the conveyor belt back, and now the boxes are where we want them, and all the other things have not been touched. Let's take a look at a similar example. We have our three boxes in our crane, but this time the boxes need to go to different spots. Last time, we swapped the box first, but as you can see, if we do that this time, the boxes will not end up in the correct positions. Instead, we need to move the conveyor belt first, then swap the boxes, Move the conveyor belt back, and then swap the boxes again. Now the boxes are in the correct positions. Let's go over some terminology. The operation where the crane swaps the box is called the insertion. Moving the conveyor belt to the left or right is called the interchange. So when we solve the first scenario, what we did was insertion, interchange, undo insertion, undo interchange. For the second example, we did interchange, insertion, undo interchange, undo insertion. If this sounds familiar to you, that's good, because this is essentially what a commutator is. Recall that a commutator follows the form a, b, a prime, b prime. We're essentially doing the same thing when we do insertion, interchange, undo insertion, undo interchange, or interchange, insertion, undo interchange, undo insertion. All right, so how does this apply to three style? Well, instead of swapping three boxes, we're gonna be swapping three pieces. I'm starting off with corners, but commutators work for edges or any other piece type. In this case, our buffer is UBL, and it needs to go to RDB and then FDR. Just like with the crane, we need an interchange and an insertion. 
The interchange is a single move that moves one sticker into another sticker spot. The insertion is three moves that inserts the sticker outside of the interchange into one of the stickers in the interchange without disturbing the rest of the interchange layer. In this case, my interchange is going to be D prime because that moves RDB into FDR's spot, like that. My insertion is going to be R U2 R prime because that inserts UBL into FDR's spot without disturbing the rest of the D layer. Then I'm going to undo the interchange and then undo the insertion. As you can see, these pieces are now solved. You might be wondering, why couldn't the insertion be U2 R prime U2? Doesn't that also insert UBL into FDR? Well, let's try it. Interchange, U2 R prime U2, undo interchange, undo insertion. Uh oh, that messed up some other pieces. The reason that didn't work is because U2 R prime U2 disturbs the D layer, and the D layer is the layer we did the interchange on. If we do that, then the area of intersection between the interchange and the insertion is more than the three pieces we want to cycle. To avoid this issue, we need to remember that the insertion can only affect one piece on the interchange layer. So if I did U2 R prime U2, we can see that three pieces on the D layer were affected. However, R U2 R prime only affects one piece on the D layer, which is why it works. A neat way to guarantee that your insertion only affects one piece on the interchange layer is to make sure your second move of the insertion is parallel to the interchange layer. Looking at this case once again, our interchange is D prime and our insertion is R U2 R prime. This agrees with our rule because the second move of the insertion is U2 and the U layer is parallel to the D layer, which is our interchange layer. Let's take a look at this case. UBL needs to go to RDF and then UFR. Now I'm gonna put stickers on them so that it's easier to track. Now we need to find two things, the interchange and the insertion. So first, let's find the interchange. Recall that the interchange is one move that puts one sticker into another sticker spot. Now I see that UBL can go to UFR spot with a U2, so that's going to be my interchange. Next, we need to find the insertion. These two corners are going to be interchanged with each other, and the insertion will insert the third corner into one of these two spots. It doesn't matter whether we insert it into here or here, but sometimes one of them will be easier than the other. Remember that the insertion is three moves, and the second move needs to be parallel to the interchange layer. In this case, the interchange layer is U, so the second move of the insertion needs to be the D layer. Now we can insert RDF into UBL with B, D2, B prime. As you can see, RDF is now in UBL spot, and the rest of the U layer is unchanged, because the second move of our insertion was D2, which is parallel to U. However, B D2 B prime is slow and it's actually faster to insert into UFR. We can do that with R prime D prime R. RDF is now in UFR spot and the rest of the U layer is unchanged. Then we can do the interchange, undo insertion and undo interchange, which solves these three pieces. In this example, we did the insertion and then the interchange. But in the first example, we did the interchange first so how do we know whether to do the interchange first or the insertion first? Well, here's the rule. The piece outside the interchange always needs to be inserted into the piece directly after it in the cycle. So when we had RDB FDR, UBL was outside the interchange and it needs to go to RDB next. R U2 R prime inserts UBL into FDR, but UBL doesn't need to go to FDR. It needs to go to RDB first. That's why we need to interchange first, which brings RDB into FDR spot so that we can correctly insert UBL, then undo the interchange and undo insertion. When we had UFR RDF, RDF is outside the interchange and it needs to go to UFR. R D prime R inserts into UFR and RDF needs to go to UFR. So we need to insert first. Interchange, undo insertion, undo interchange. An important thing to note is that when we're doing insertions and interchanges, orientation matters. So we need to pay attention to the sticker rather than just the piece. Looking at this case once again, you might think, doesn't F D F prime work? After all, it inserts that piece into here. Let's try that. F D F prime interchange, undo insertion, undo interchange. Uh oh, it looks like these two corners are twisted. To understand why this happened, we need to track the sticker rather than the piece. Okay, I've labeled the stickers that we are paying attention to, so it should be easier to track them. So when we insert, we want this sticker 
to go to this spot. However, f d f prime puts r d f into this spot, but we wanted it to go to here. And that's why the corners ended up in the wrong orientation. On the other hand, r d prime r correctly inserts r d f into u f r's spot. Interchange moves are similar. We need to pay attention to the sticker, not just the piece. For example, in our first case, you might think that R interchanges RDB and FDR, but if we look closely, R makes RDB go here, but we wanted it to go to FDR. D prime correctly moves RDB into FDR. So far, we've only seen comms that require an interchange and insertion. These are called pure commutators. Most comms are not pure comms, unfortunately. A lot of them require setup moves. Setup moves are several moves that set up your targets such that they can be solved with a pure commutator. For example, in this case, our targets are LFU and UFR. Let me label them so that they'll be easier to track. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's see. LF and UFR are interchangeable with an F prime because that puts UFR into LFU spot. However, there's not a simple way to insert UBL into either LFU or UFR. So what we can do is a setup move, F. And now it's equivalent to solving here to here, to here. This is actually similar to the last case we looked at. These two stickers are interchangeable with a U2, and we can insert this into this with R prime, D prime, R. Now this is a sticker that's outside of the interchange, and unlike last time, it needs to go here first. And since we insert into this spot, that means we need to interchange first so that we can correctly insert this sticker into here, then undo the interchange, undo the insertion, and undo the setup move. I know this is a lot of information, and finding comms can be hard, so I came up with a simple four-step process to find any comm. When you're trying to solve a case, the first thing you should ask yourself is, are two stickers interchangeable? If they're not, then you need a setup move or setup moves. Next, ask yourself the question, can I insert the third sticker into one of the two interchangeable stickers? If the answer is no, then you need more setup moves. After that, you should have a pure commutator. So now you can determine the interchange move and the insertion moves. Sometimes it can be difficult to find the correct interchange or insertion, but that's something that just comes with practice. Finally, determine whether you need to interchange first or insert first by asking yourself, where does the piece outside of the interchange need to go first? Then you're all set and you can execute the comm. Let's take a look at a few examples. So here, the cycle is UBL, to BUR to FDR. The first question is, are two stickers interchangeable? The answer is yes, because BUR and FDR are interchangeable with an R2. The next question is, can I insert the third sticker into one of the two interchangeable stickers? For this, the answer is no, so we need to do setup moves. Normally, you would test out different setup moves until you find something that works, but I've already done that, so I know that the best setup for this case is D prime, R prime. Next, we need to determine the interchange and insertion. These two stickers are interchangeable with a U2. And this sticker can be inserted into here with R prime D R. Notice that the second move of our insertion D is parallel to our interchange layer U. Now we need to see whether to interchange first or insert first. The sticker outside of the interchange needs to go here. And since we're inserting into this spot, we need to interchange first. Then insert, undo interchange, undo insertion, then undo the setup. A nice thing about this comm is that when we undo the insertion, it cancels with undoing the setup. Let's take a look at edges for a moment. Here, my buffer is df and it needs to go to fu and then rf. The idea of insertions and interchanges is the exact same as with corners. First, we ask ourselves, are two stickers interchangeable? Yes, they are, because I can put df into fu spot with m prime. Can I insert the third sticker into one of the two interchangeable stickers? Yes, I can. I can insert RF into FU with U prime R U. The only part of the M slice that was affected is FU, and that's because I followed the rule that the second move of the insertion, R, is parallel to the interchange slice, which is the M slice. Now, I've determined that my interchange is M prime and my insertion is U R U. RF is a sticker that's outside the interchange, and it needs to go here first. Since we're inserting into this spot, we need to interchange first. 
then insert, undo interchange, and undo insertion. Edges are a bit trickier than corners because there are some form movers and unintuitive inserts, but I'll go over those in my next video. We can also use commutators for other piece types, like centers. My center buffer is UBL and it needs to go to FUR and then RUB. Now these two centers are interchangeable with a U and I can insert this center into here with R, U, R prime. The center outside the interchange is this and needs to go here. I'm also inserting into this spot. So I can go ahead and insert, interchange, undo insertion, undo interchange. Now I believe that center columns are actually the easiest to learn because they only have one orientation and there are no form movers or unintuitive inserts. If you're having trouble with corner or edge comms, pick up a 4x4 and try some center comms. Finally, let's end by taking a look at commutator notation. Because comms always follow the structure A, B, A prime, B prime, blinders have a shorthand way of writing them. A comma B is equivalent to A, B, A prime, B prime. Earlier we had this case, and the solution can be written as R prime, D prime, R comma, U2. The expanded form is R prime, D prime, R, U2, R prime, D, R, U2. I also like this form because it's easy to see the interchange and insertion. R prime, D prime, R is the insertion, and U2 is the interchange. If we need to indicate a setup move, we can do that like this. S colon, A comma, B. This is equivalent to S, A, B, A prime, B prime, S prime. For example, we had this case earlier. The solution can be written as F colon R prime D prime R comma U2. And the expanded form of that is F R prime D prime R U2 R prime D R U2 F prime. I also typed up a bunch of three style practice problems along with an explanation of the solution. So check that out if you're interested. All right, that's it for part one. In part two, I'll go over some more examples, show you some common commutator groups, and talk about more stuff like parity and the best buffers. I know that 3Style is a difficult concept, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching.